Hi, I'm Stanley Chiu, and I'm doing my tech talk on public key encryption. So I'm going to present you with a situation. I have a message, and I just want to send this to my friend June. It's you know like a letter or something. Um, the problem arises when my annoying friend Alvin is trying to listen in on this message, and he's he's doing all he can to look at what the message says. He's trying to intercept it on its way there. He's looking over June's shoulder when he's reading it. And he's doing all these things to try to figure out what it says. And you know, it's not that big of a problem. I can just watch the message, you know, make sure he doesn't catch it. But like as time comes to infinity, Alvin's really determined. Eventually I'm gonna I'm gonna lose track of my letter and he's gonna get his hands on it somehow and find out what is in my message. So me being the smart guy I am, I'm like, hey. Why don't I use a secret phrase to scramble up my message? It's a system that only I know, and it's a secret phrase that only I know, so Alvin wouldn't be able to figure out what my message is. And that's the idea behind symmetric key encryption, which is one of the basics in cryptography. So I have my message on the left, I have my secret passphrase in the middle, and I use that along with a system to sort of scramble my message into something that only I can read. And the great thing about this is, is that it works both ways. I can scramble the message with the same secret phrase, and then I can unscramble the message with the same secret phrase. This is the idea behind encryption, which is not to be confused with hashing, because hashing is actually one way. So that's why you store passwords in it. You can't reverse engineer what a password is, generally. Um, so me figuring out the system, I'm like, hey, June, this is my system. I'm going to tell it to you, and Alvin's not going to listen to you. So now we can sort of send messages to each other without Alvin, without worrying about Alvin figuring out our message. So we whisper it to each other, and you know, like I'm next to him. It's not a big deal, but it becomes a big deal when you're across the world, right? Because now I have to tell him my message through the same means. I'm sending him a message of my secret message. You, you get my point. It's the original problem, and Alvin's like everywhere, so <laughs> we can't, we can't, we can't send the secret the secret key to each other through phone or Slack or anything. So yeah, eventually he's going to get his hands on it. So this is where actually public key encryption comes into play. And I'm going to bore you with a little bit of modulus math. It's like, um, so modulus math is a subsect of math where, you know, it's you're very familiar with it. You use it in JavaScript all the time. It's the mod op operator. 13 mod 10 is 3. Very easy. It's the remainder instead of the quotient. And the cool thing about it is that it's periodic in nature. So 3, 13, 23, 33 mod 10 will all equal 3. And that's why it's called clock math, because it's periodic. And another cool feature about it is that if I give you one part of the information, it's really hard to figure out what my original number was. Right now I'm thinking of 13, but you'd have to check every single possible value in order to figure out what I did and say, is it this, is it this, is it this, is it this, and so on and so forth. So these two guys named Whit Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman were like, hmm, that's really cool. Let's use that to sort of have, they're, they're mathematicians. They're playing with numbers all the time. So they found this really cool phenomenon where they can send each other parts of information and keep parts of information to themselves and then trade it like so. He has the result of Hellman's function and he has the result of Diffie's function now. And then they do the same exact thing, and they come to a result which is secret only to themselves. So by sending parts of the truth, you can get the whole truth. But only the people that have the secrets can figure out the truth between the two of them. This is, this is um, as you can see in the right, bottom right-hand corner, they're equivalent. And yeah. So these, these three guys, Rives, Shamir, and Edelman, they're from MIT, they were like, hey, that's a really cool phenomenon in math. Let's apply it to cryptography. So they took that and they were like, "Yeah," and they decided they this they cr used that phenomenon to create the RSA cipher that we know today, which is used in public key cryptography. And like, this is a lot of math. Don't worry about like figuring it out. The key takeaway from this slide is that they use the same idea of there's public information and private information, information that is only known to the couple people that are involved, and then there's information that you can just put out there publicly, and it doesn't matter if people know it. They're not going to be able to figure it out eventually. Yeah, it, 
I believe that using an RSA cipher, you can't break it before the sun stops burning based on current computing powder. So these are like, they use very, very big prime numbers. You need like big int libraries to do these things. So much bigger than you can do in JavaScript normally. So in symmetric key encryption, you use the same passphrase to scramble your message and unscramble your message. But in public key cryptography, you have two sets of keys. You have a public key and you have a private key. And the public key can be used for encryption, but only the private key can decrypt things. So using this, now I can sort of have a way to send information to each other without worrying about who knows what. So now I can have a ton of June friends. I can give each of them a public key, and they can all encrypt it, whatever they want with it, send it back to me, and only I can read it because I have the private key, which never leaves my hands. So instead of telling him through a whisper or having to fly over and worry about Alvin, I can use public key cryptography, the, the idea that there's a, you can have a public key and a private key to send a symmetric key. So this solves the original problem. You can send each other symmetric keys using public key cryptography, establish a channel which you can have two-way communication without worrying about anything. And that solves the problem of having to worry about the key in general. It's really cool, actually. So another cool feature about public key cryptography is that it comes with the added benefit of a digital signature. So let's say that I send my information to June again. It's, it's just uh, the original letter. And let's say that we've already established our symmetric key two-way communication channel. Um, this is the original message unedited. So I send him the message. And then I take that original message, I hash it using something like bcrypt, and then I encrypt that hashed digest. So you'll see in a moment why this is cool. So then I send June this hash digest, which is also encrypted. And now he has all of this information. He has this big scrambled thing, which he can use his public key to unscramble that and get the hash. And he has the original message, so he can use something like bcrypt if I tell him about what type of hashing measure I used. He can hash the original message and see that the hashes match, which means that my original message hasn't been tampered with. And it, in fact, comes from me, because his public key can unencrypt the message. So it functions in the same way as a traditional signature. It's a way of proving who you are with the added benefit of showing that your message hasn't been touched. And it's really important. In digital. You can, you can tamper with messages and then send them to other people. So this is, this is really important, actually. And that's all I have to say about public key. It's like, it's like a really brief introduction to cryptology as a field. It's really math heavy. But if you can understand the underlying concepts of why they're using this math, it's really cool, actually. So I used a bunch of citations and credits. I have to give credit where it's due. Um, yeah. And that's my tech talk.